Welcome back to another edition of Pure Picks. Joined here by my man Alex. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing very well, James. Uh, it was a big, big, profitable UFC pay per view event. Uh, looking to carry that momentum forward into UFC Mexico. Uh, I think this card's going to be a banger, and so can't wait. We're on a we're on we're on a heater, man. Yeah, we're on a fucking heater, definitely, dude. Um, just for all you pure pickers, I want to be very upfront with you. Uh, we granted some technical issues uh, while recording this, so we're just gonna fucking blow through this <laughs> and get to get this done as quickly as possible. Because uh, you know we love you guys, but we don't want to spend another hour or so <laughs> doing this. So we're gonna do this quickly as possible. Let's go over the recap for Bet and May tips. Uh, yeah, just look at all these wins, man. Like, honestly, we had a fucking great night. 13.45 units won. Ilya Tatoria was our main guy. Five unit banger on him, plus 105 odds. Marab was fucking fantastic as well. Laid down three units on him. Really, the only loss that we had was Mackenzie Dern. And Alex, uh, I mean, I know you had some great plays as well. Yeah, really wa wanted to quickly touch on Ming Yang Zhang. Uh, one point that I, I brought up in the earlier session was that, man, you can't find another YouTuber, Twitter person that was touting Ming Yang Zhang as a straight pick. Um, I'm just finding, I'm just out here finding those gems. And so uh, that hit Danny Barlow along with the Marab over two and a half, that hit best bets, both bets hit. So uh, really, just trying to give the give the people the best bets, the juice plays. Um, so glad glad we had a really profitable event. Yes, sir. And pure pictures, man. We are on a freaking heater right now, dude. Over twenty percent, seven percent ROI overall since November. Forty percent ROI on the parlay. So please check out purepicks.gg. It is our website. We have it fully functional right now. I'll open up for you guys right now. Actually, just so you can just see what's going on. You can join the Discord, log in, sign up, press access to purchase our Pure Picks Pro membership, which will unlock all the Pure Picks that you can get. I also want to show some winning tickets as well. Uh, we had obviously a lot of nice action. Here's Ilya Teporia, won uh, about 5.7K on a 6K bet on him. I've uh, had some nice stuff. I mean, Kevin, he won 14K, uh, 11K overall in that event. So uh, that that's just something that we want to share with you pure pickers. And yeah, let's just get started with the next event, man. Always looking forward onto the next one mentality here at Pure Picks. UFC Fight Night Moreno versus Rival 2. This is going to be in Mexico City. Elevation altitude will be key in this. Uh, we have worked in the notes for the, uh, we have right now of each fighter that's going to, you know, are they prepared for this? Are they not? So you guys will see that in the breakdowns. Let's get it started, man. Uh, Naimov versus Eric Silver here. We have Naimov 10 and 2, 5 known as last 5. He's coming off of that decision victory over Nathaniel Wood. Silva, 9 and 2, 4 and 1 is last 5. Decision, uh, he's coming off that submission loss to TJ Brown. Odds for this fight right now, Naimov is actually at minus 425. He keeps on getting heavier and heavier as a favorite. Uh, opened up at a minus 325. Alex, what are your thoughts here on Naimov versus Silva? Guys, Naimov Gigalock here. Just lay him into the parlays. Uh, I think he's better than Eric Silva everywhere. Um, Eric Silva gets himself into poor positions. Uh, he's very sloppy when he gets taken down. He'll give up his back. Um, Naimov, on the other hand, very high fight IQ. Uh, I bet on in his last fight against Nathaniel Wood. I bet I, I bet on Nathaniel Wood. It was very, very, very frustrating fight to watch, just because I, I felt like Naimov should have gotten a point deducted. Um, but you know that just goes to show Naimov. He's willing to utilize all the tricks in his arsenal to secure that win. And so that's that's a fighter that you kind of want it back because he's going to, he's going to do whatever it takes to, um, to win you that money. And, uh, one thing that I do want to know is that the only way I see Naimov losing is to an overhand. Um, it's important to note that he was wobbled late, uh, in the first round by Nathaniel Wood. So, um, that's kind of Eric Silva's only win condition. Uh, other than that, I think Naimov is a giga lock here. Yeah, I totally agree with Alex. I think uh, Naimov is actually better than 
Silva everywhere. Um, he should finish Silva in this fight. Silva, just a little background on him. I mean, this guy was subbed by TJ Brown. TJ Brown went on to get subbed himself and is now out of the UFC. Not a great sign for Silva. I think that as far as the altitude factor, Naimov has been training in, um, I think, high altitude, so he should be okay for this fight. He uh, trains in Denver, and he arrived in Mexico City a few days ago, so it should be okay. Silva's been training in Mexico for uh, weeks, so he should be similar cardio, so I don't think that should be a factor in this fight. My pick here is Naimov by submission. He's a parlay piece for me. Yeah, just stick him in a lot of parlays. I think he'll do fine. He's growing bigger and bigger as a favorite. I mean, last time that we did this, minus 400, just changed to minus 425. So yeah, get in while the getting's good right here. Moving on to the next fight, we have Victor Altamoreno versus Felipe Dos Santos. Uh, uh, Victor is 12 and three. He is three and two in his last five. Coming off that decision, lost to Tim Elliott. Dos Santos, seven and one, four, one and one in his last five. He's coming off that decision, lost to Manal Cop. Odds for this fight, Dos Santos minus 290, open up at a minus 250. Uh, Alex, what are your thoughts here on Dos Santos and Alto Moreno? Yeah, so, man, I'm really considering a 10-unit gigabomb on Felipe Dos Santos. Uh, I think he's, I think in his last fight against him now, Cop really showed me that this guy is the real deal, in my opinion, uh, especially because I do rate now Cop very highly. Uh, first, looking at Alto Moreno, uh, I think he has a very similar fighting style to Murat in that he'll just spam takedowns to get the opponent off balance. Um, but obviously, he's not at the at the level of uh, Murat in terms of skill. Um, in my eyes, Alto Moreno has a very unpolished fighting style. Um, I feel like he does gas a little bit towards the second and third rounds. Um, but what made me feel really strongly about Felipe Dos Santos was uh, Alto Moreno's fight against Daniel Lacerda. I think Lacerda and Felipe Dos Santos have very similar fighting styles, except Dos Santos is just way more durable um, and uh, has much better cardio. And so in that fight against Alto Moreno, uh, Daniel Lacerda had him hurt very badly in round one. Uh, it almost looked like Lacerda was just going to you know, finish him in that round. Um, but to Alto Moreno's credit, uh, he's also very durable himself. and uh, Lacerda is a very flaky fighter, so Altamirano got it done. But I think uh, Felipe dos Santos is going to present uh, a lot of challenges for Altamirano. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I see this fight going a little bit different than you. I think that Victor he is a well-rounded fighter, uh, not dangerous though. You know, likes to strike, uh, good at mixing in his kicks and punches. I think that in his uh, one of his previous fights, he actually shot for like 16 takedowns, landed like two of them. So he is able to spam takedowns uh, at times. Um, now, he does leave himself to being hit, you know, 53% striking defense, so he can't get hit. I think that Victor, to me at least, he does have good cardio, good training as well in Mexico City for the last 10 days. Dos Santos, shootbox style fighter, you know, likes to finish on the feet and the ground. I think that he can be a bit wild in his shots, which leads them having less than stellar 38% striking defense. However, he does show good chin and durability, especially in that last loss to Manel Cop was knocked down and continued to outland and outstrike Cop in terms of volume. Uh, the grappling wise, he prefers to go for the submissions, um, but he does lack that control time. So mainly he's a more of a panda fighter. He arrived in Mexico City at um, February 17th, and it's really been unknown if his, uh, he's been training altitude to prepare. So that's an unknown factor there. I think that this fight will be an all-action fight, high volume. Uh, but I do think that the fight will go to decision based on the durability of both fighters. I'm going to lean towards Victor edging out a close decision based on his UFC experience. Picker is Victor by decision. But I don't like him enough to actually play him at those dog odds. However, I could see the over two and a half um, as a potential parlay piece. And right now, the odds for that are minus 245. So opened up at a minus 185. Now it's minus 245. So I, I can see that as a potential parlay piece for me. Moved on to the next fight that we have here on the prelims. We have Luis Rodriguez versus Dennis Bondar. Luis Rodriguez, 15 and 2, 5 and 0 in his last five. 
He's coming off of a, a KO victory outside of the UFC. So this will be uh, technically his UFC debut, but he did have a Dana White contender series loss in his record. He's fighting against Dennis Bondar, 19-4. He is 3-2 and two in his last five, coming off of that technical decision loss, although it was a knockout loss if you actually watched the fight. Uh, going back to the odds for this fight, actually, uh, Luis Rodriguez, minus 130, opened up at a plus 145. Uh, Alex, what do you think about Luis and Dennis here? Yep, so Luis dropping down a weight class. I think that's important to note. His last few fights were at bantamweight. Um, you know, from the tape I've seen, he he looks like a low-volume power puncher, just, you know, someone who's loading up for the kill shot. Um, I think, you know, if he isn't able to land heavy on Bondar, I can see a decision or submission victory on the side of bondar as crazy as that sounds i think you know stylistically speaking bondar looks pretty good in the cage he has good head head movement um and you know so so volume um but definitely more than uh luis rodriguez uh however he i i do have question marks on his uh durability and overall fight iq uh you know, because Bondar essentially got TKO'd in the final seconds of his fight against Carlos Hernandez. Uh, and that was a very, very bad look. So um, a lot of question marks, too, on Bondar's side. But I feel like, you know, the pick has got to be Bondar. Um, I just, I don't think I can pick Rodriguez as a side here. So going with Bondar. Yep, understandable right there. I mean, Luis, uh, very calm to measure approach to striking. He's really looking to find that finish, like you mentioned. I do think he's able to move around the cage pretty well and track down his opponents. Pretty good at countering, which aligns with his patient approach. Seven KO wins, uh, so he does have some power in his strikes. Can't be a bit low volume, though, and too much of a kind of waiter in, in that style. Uh, does not have the best defense on body and leg shots, so he can get pieced up there. Likes to use, uh, likes to fight on the feet. However, in his Dana White Contender Series uh, fight, he actually pivoted to a grappling game plan and landed two out of four takedowns. Had about six minutes and uh, 33 seconds of control time. He was actually outstruck all three rounds on the feet in that fight. His opponent, Jerome Rivera, went on to go 0 and 4 in the UFC. Not a great sign. Luis is in Mexico City, been training Mexico City for the last two weeks. Um, Bondar. Great. I think he's a good wrestler. I think he has some good takedowns to so scramble well, can use the clinch as well to use trips and throws to get the fight to the mat. Striking is also decent. He has a good, nice overhand, mixes in with his takedown game pretty well with that overhand. And he can launch some power shots. Um, now, he can be a bit wild on the feet and can be finished himself while throwing heavy. He Bondar has been training at similar elevation and altitude at Jackson Wink. I think this will be a close fight. I will lean towards Luis being able to land the heavier shots and hurt Bondar in the feet. I think he could either find a KO finish or a club and sub. So pick here is Luis inside the distance. However, I'm staying away from this fight just because it is Luis UFC debut. And we have not had a seen a, we have not seen a good track record for UFC debuts fighters so far. Moving on to the next fight in the lightweight division. We have Claudio Poyas versus Ferris Sahim. Claudio Poyas, Prince of Peru, 12 and 3, 4 and 1 his last five. He's actually coming off of that body kick knockout loss to Dan Hooker, facing off against Ferris Sahim, 14 and 4, 4 and 1 his last five, coming off of that decision victory over Jai Herbert. Odds for this fight right now, Zahim is a minus 210, open up at a minus 225. For me, I'm going with Ferris Zahim in this fight. I, I think that uh, this is going to be a pretty cut and dry fight. If Ferris Zahim is able to stop the takedowns that Claudio is going to shoot at him, he will just piece this guy up and most likely will go to decision. I, I do think that Poyas, you know, he likes to play in the guard a little too much. Uh, he is a very talented grappler, though. He, he has some leg lock submissions, likes to go for the subs, you know, seven sub wins in his career. He actually has three sub wins in the UFC, so that's pretty noteworthy. Now, he's a pretty bad striker. You saw in the last fight with Dan Hooker. Now, Dan Hooker is a great striker, but he looked really lost out there. I mean, I didn't really see any positive striking ability for Poyas. He's been training in Mexico for the last uh, few weeks, so he should be okay with this. Zahim is a good striker, able to work in the kicks and punches. 
He has that patient European kind of French approach, so very low volume, but he has good movement and a really accurate jab. Uh, his takedown defense is going to be where this fight is going to go. I think that his 75% takedown defense is okay. Um, he has four sub wins. He's been sub once in the UFC, four and one decisions. He's actually been in Mexico for over two weeks, so he should be okay with the cardio. However, he is two and four outside of Europe. So there's a lot of question marks here. My pick here is going to be Zion by decision, but I could see more value going with the over two and a half and minus 175 as a potential uh, parlay leg there. Alex, what do you think about Zion versus Poyas here? Yep. So I think this matchup is pretty interesting, actually. Um, first of all, pure pickers, go and watch the go and watch Poyas' last fight against Hooker. Uh, I thought it was pure comedy. Uh, I think you guys will will enjoy it definitely. Uh, so this is another one of those very um, binary stylistic fights. Oyez, obviously, he's trying to get the fight to the ground. Uh, Ferez Yam, he's looking to keep it standing. Uh, so whoever wins this fight is going to make it look very easy, in my opinion. So one thing that I noticed, um, and although this fight was more than three years ago, I went I went back and watched the Ziam fight against Jamie Malarkey. Uh, he got taken down like four or five times in that fight. And that was a big red flag for me. And enough for me to not really want any action on this fight. Uh, I will say, though, that Jamie Malarkey lost that fight. So Ziam uh, got, had more volume uh, and, and got the decision victory. But, uh, you know, in my eyes, both of these guys seem like they uh, tend to gas. So can't really trust either fighter. So, you know, uh, I said this earlier, but I might be a complete clown with this pick, but I'm going with Poyez to win by decision. I think Ziam is talented enough to not get sucked. So give me Poyez by decision. Awesome. Awesome. Let's move on to the next fight that we have on the prelims. Uh, we have Jesus Aguilar versus Mateus Mandanka. Jesus Aguilar, 9-2. and two. He's 4-1 and one in his last five. He's coming off of the KO victory over Shannon Ross. Facing off against Mateus Madonka, 10-2. 3-2 in his last five. He's coming off of that uh, decisive knockout loss uh, to Nate Maness, where he was a minus 300 favorite and put in a performance like that. Uh, looking at the odds right now, uh, we have... Um, let's see here. Mateus is actually a minus 150. So he's opened up at a minus 110. Uh, not that much of a line movement there, but I think that it is pretty decent movement. Alex, what do you think about Jesus and uh, Mateus here? Yeah, so I think I'm staying far away from this fight. You know, gun to my head, I'm choosing Jesus, uh, even with that significant reach disadvantage. Uh, I just don't know how you can trust a fighter like Mendonca. Um, like this guy might have have negative fight IQ. Uh, if you uh, or if you watch this fight against Nate Menez, uh, it's just he just put on a terrible showing at a minus three hundred favorite. Um, and I just feel like, you know, he's prone to gas with his grappling heavy uh, style. Um, I think you know if you were to, you know, just look at danger levels. You know, Mendonca, I think, is the more dangerous fighter, uh, at least in the early rounds. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to stay away from this fight, but give me Jesus, as, Jesus Aguilar as a pick. Yeah, I actually agree with your points, but I think I'm, I'm a little bit more confident in Jesus in this matchup. I think that he has enough grappling and wrestling to really put on that pace on Mateus. Good transition, scrambles well good sweeps as well. I think he's a good grappler overall. He likes to lock in that guillotine choke. Uh, six sub wins in his career, four via guillotine. His striking could improve, but he likes to move forward and throw to wild power. And you can see that, you know, he did finish a fight uh, with an overhand knockout. So against Shannon Ross, so he does have that power to knock someone out. In his three UFC fights, he has shown to be low volume. However, he does have a 63% striking defense, which is pretty good. And he trains in Mexico. It's been there for six weeks. So his cardio should all be there. But Dez is a powerful shootbox style uh, fighter. I think that he attacks 
well at all three levels, especially with kicks, smooth combos with punches and kicks. He can be patient or get himself into brawls, which is where I think that he needs to improve upon. He, I think he needs to just really commit to one game plan. He's been really countered in brawls. I mean, he was just absolutely destroyed by Nate Maness in his last fight on the feet. His grappling, it is pretty decent. He has good takedowns with power. He was actually able to land uh, two takedowns on Jevy Bastra at, at minus uh, at a uh, 135 at Batman weight. So I don't think he has much control time though. He just prefers to go some for subs himself. Mateus also arrived in Mexico just three days ago, so cardio may be an issue for him. I believe that Jesus will outwork Mateus after a close round one. He may even lose that round, but I think that he will just outwork uh, Mateus in the second and third round, and I do think that he will find a submission. So Jesus by submission is going to be my pick. I think he's a potential dog play. Um, I will actually hold off for now and wait for the line to get a little bit juicier because right now it's a plus 130 for uh, Jesus opened up at a minus 110. So I think that as the week goes on, people are going to be more so on Mateus' side. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at that value and hopefully we'll lock in some good value there. Let's move on to the other fight, actually, on the prelim. I actually skipped over this one. So this one is going to be Edgar Chires against Daniel Lacerda. We have, and this is going to be a rebooking of that no contest that they had about five months ago. So Edgar Chires, 10 and 5. He is obviously coming off that no contest. Lacerda, 11 and 5, coming off that no contest as well. But he is also coming off of four straight uh, losses in the UFC all via finish. Odds for this fight right now, Edgar Chires, minus 165, uh, minus 365 rather, and he opened up at a minus one, uh, 400. So there has been some slight dog action taken on Edgar Chires. Uh, just to give a point of reference for the viewers and peer pickers, uh, Edgar Chires actually was a minus 214 uh, in the first fight. So after I guess after seeing that fight, people have been hammering some Chires. Alex, what do you think about Chires versus Lacerda here? Yep. So I don't really have much to say about this fight specifically, other than the fact that I think Lacerda has real durability issues, uh, and also you know more subpar fight IQ. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I just I think he's another shoot box guy. I don't really know what it is with these shoot box guys, but they're all very flaky in my opinion. Um, their striking looks amazing, but they just kind of wilt under pressure and seems like they just give up so pick for me is uh Shires and you know I just think Lacerda always finds ways to lose yeah no I, I totally agree with you I, I think that you know Edgar is a tough and well-rounded fighter likes to put on a pace really good of a grappler though I I think that he's going to use that grappling to eventually win this fight like he did almost the first time he does have a good jab, uh, but his striking defense is below average, you know, negative two to one striking ratio. So we did see a little bit of that in the first fight. I think that Lacerda was piecing um, Egger on the feet a little bit. Egger, I think that what won me over with him was how well he performed versus Tasuro Tyra. I mean, Tasuro Tyra to me is a very high level fighter and grappler, and Egger was able to kind of stand toe to toe with him at various points in that fight. And just seeing how Lacerda has fought in all of his UFC bouts so far, just a very entertaining fighter, but he's a guy that you tend to try to fade, right? I mean, his, he just really killed or be killed, wild striking, round of cardio at most. So he's very dangerous in that round of cardio, but after round one, this guy just falls apart. Um, I think that Lacerda also has been a, in Mexico for about one week, so that's not enough time to be acclimated to the uh, altitude usually takes about two weeks. He's also a known gasser fight fighting Mexico City. I think that this will just make his cardio issues more pronounced. I am once again confident in Edgar winning this matchup. First matchup, Lacerdo is winning on the feed. However, Edgar was able to just lock in that sub pretty quickly and suddenly. It may have been early stoppage, but I think that Lacerdo would have either been choked out there or just later on in the fight. So Give me Edgar inside the distance. Uh, he's a parlay piece for me, and I'll be stuffing Tim into a parlay as we speak. Let's move on to the featured prelim of the night. We have Christian Quinones versus Roni Barcelos. Quinones, 18 and 4, 4 and 1 in his last five. He's coming off of that submission loss to Kang Ho Kang. 
Ronnie Barcelo, 17 and 5, 1 and 4 in his last five, coming off that decision loss to Kyler Phillips. Odds for this fight right now, we have Ronnie Barcelos at a minus 200. So pretty interesting line movement there. Alex, what do you think about Quinones versus Barcelos here? Yo, so I think this is a very tough fight to call. Um, Barcelos is getting up there in age while Quinones is just entering his prime. Uh, one thing, though, I was very, very surprised with um, the line movement on the over-under. So before looking at the lines, when I was watching tape, uh, in my head, I was like, okay, I really like the over here. Let me go check out what the over-under is. To my surprise, the line opened up at minus 200 for the over two and a half, but it's now plus 115. So I'm just very surprised. You know, that looks like amazing value to me, but like, I don't know if someone knows something. Um, like, that just, uh, it's like a big red flag. So, um, in terms of, you know, picking a side, I don't really have a, again, I don't really have a good read on this fight. Uh, it just seems like it'll end up being a sweaty split decision of some kind. Uh, in both of Quinones' UFC fights, it's important to note that he has never gone past the first round. Uh, so, really, not, sh not 100% sure how his cardio is going to hold up. But, I mean, looking at his fighting style, I don't think he exerts that much energy. Um, but, you know, one thing to know is he has been training in Mexico City for six weeks. And Barcelos, on the other hand, although he is getting up there in age, and he did just arrive this past week, um, he hasn't really shown that much cardio issues in his past fights. So that's why I like the over. Um, but, you know, we'll see if we play it or not. Yeah, I have very similar thoughts to you on this fight, Alex. I mean, I think Quinones, all offense fighter, really loves to brawl and attack subs on the ground. So this guy just likes to get finishes, whether he gets finishes himself or he gets finished. Um, I think that he likes to move forward a lot as well. He does favor submission over position, and he has 85% takedown defense, but those are mainly just takedown stuffs from a Dana White Contender Series fight. He seems to have average takedown defense based on his other few fights. As you mentioned, he's been in Mexico for six weeks, so he should be more than capable in terms of the cardio, uh, whatever he had before. Barcelos, all-around veteran, very high-level wrestling pedigree and good Muay Thai stand-up. Going back to his wrestling, I mean, this guy's a decorated Brazilian wrestler, good takedowns, uses technique on the entries, scrambles well, just transitions well. He also has a 90% takedown defense, so he, very hard to take this guy down. His jiu-jitsu skills are pretty good. He has a black belt, but he only has one um, sub in the sub win in the UFC and two sub uh, wins in his career. I think that Barcelos, his striking is also pretty decent as well. I think that he has really powerful Muay Thai shots, good combos, a snappy leg kick. Barcelos arrived to Mexico about three days ago, so who knows if he'll be ready for the altitude. I lean towards yes, because this guy's just a veteran. He's been fighting for a long time. He kind of knows his body. So I'm, I'm going to trust that he knows what he's doing. I do believe that Barcelos will stay smart on the feet and just look to work in his wrestling to control Quinones on the ground for the majority of the fight. He may gas out later in the fight due to his age and just not being acclimated to the altitude. However, I do trust Barcelos just fight cleaner and have an edge in grappling compared to Quinones's grab a uh, brawling kind of style so pick here is going to be barcelos via decision like you i see potential value in that over two and a half it's plus 115 right now open at minus 200 i think especially both of these men will fight a bit more cautiously quinones after he was finishing round one in his last fight and barcelos potentially with a deteriorated chin so he might be trying to protect that chin with some grappling exchanges so pick here is barcelos by decision but yeah, I think the over two and a half could look good, although it does seem very trappy because <laughs> I maybe we're missing something and, you know, we put it in a bet at plus odds and then that goes in the tank mainly because uh, I'm I'm witnessing, I'm kind of envisioning that Barcelos is going to get KO'd or something like uh, kind of like how Marco Manson got KO'd. So that could be something that uh, we might stay away from later. But for now, I think that is potential good value. Moving on to the main card, and this is going to be a, a banger of a main card. I think there's a lot of good fights on this main card. We have Manuel Torres versus Chris Duncan. Manuel Torres, 14-2, 5-0 in his last five. 
He is coming off that elbow KO victory over Nicholas Mata. Chris Duncan, 11-1, 4-1 his last five. He's coming off that decision victory over Yanal Asmos. Odds for this fight right now, Manuel Torres is minus 180, opened up at a minus 200. So slight dog action has been taken overall. Uh, it is uh, noteworthy that he actually was at one point a pick uh to Chris Duncan. But in the last week or so, it has kind of trickled back to the uh, opening line. Of, um, and now it's minus 180. So interesting odd, uh, odds and line movement there. Um, Alex, what do you think about this fight between Torres and Duncan? I'll let you start off the main card. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. I kind of like Chris Duncan here uh, in this fight as the underdog. I'm just not sold on Manuel Torres. Um, I'm telling you right now, I I really do believe that Manuel Torres is a heavy gasser. Yeah. Um, in his fight against Frank Camacho, uh, you know he was be- he was being the shit out of him. But uh, you know, moments before Frank got knocked out, um, Manuel Torres was starting to gas hard, and I, mm-hmm. I saw that. Um, so you know, if this fight goes past the first round. I'm starting to heavily favor Chris Duncan. Um, you know, if I'm Chris Duncan's coach, I'm telling him, you know, avoid getting into striking exchanges with this guy. And, you know, easier said than done, but ho- hopefully he'll close distance and just get into a heavy grapple and ref- wrestling exchange. Uh, and so my pick here is going to be Duncan. Do you, do you think that uh, Duncan will be able to weather that storm for that that round? That that is like the yeah. main question. Yeah, that's the main question right there. And so, I mean, if you look at Chris Duncan, he's not the quickest guy on the feet. Um, I think he definitely will have some some trouble. Uh, but he he fights out of a pretty good gym, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think a top eighty gym. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, those guys are really good. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I trust that he'll he'll utilize some wrestling, some of that Grant Dawson wrestling. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Chris Duncan here. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Torres is a fight ender, right? Uh, this guy likes to just use some dangerous striking techniques in the range and in the pocket. I mean, we saw what he did with those elbows. Uh, power, volume. Just doesn't have the best striking defense. Be pretty inconsistent on the feet, but I think more so he's just looking to end that fight. He has a good strength to him in the clinch. Launch elbows and knees from there. Has a style that is really just finish or getting finish. Uh, so far in the UFC, he has been getting the finish. So hats off to him. Um, Torres, the grappling. I mean, he does have six sub wins in his career, all in the first round, but just none in the UFC and. You know, maybe those some of those were questionable opponents right there. He's shown some very little grappling UFC, so he's really all uh, kind of a striker, all offense, uh, all offense kind of striker. And Torres, he's been training in Mexico City for a few weeks, but like you mentioned, I, I think that this guy does have some pretty suspect cardio and gas tank. Um, that could be a problem against Duncan. I mean, Duncan's actually somewhat of a similar fighter to Torres on the feet. I mean, he, he does have some, you know, grappling in his arsenal as well. I think that he likes to brawl and has some good power, has a nice leg kick that uses it to mix in with his punches. His striking defense is 49%, so it's a little below average. Um, he does like to use his chin and durability to weather that storm, but he has been rocked multiple times in fights. Uh, he usually does recover, though. So that's something that's good. This guy is able to recover and takes and eats shots well. His grappling, though, I think is going to be where he needs to take this fight. I mean, he has 39% takedown accuracy, lands about 3.63 takedowns per fight. He actually has a 100% takedown defense. So I think this guy is well-versed in grappling. He's shown the ability to control opponents on the ground and against the cage if needed. Uh, Duncan, he actually got into like a Twitter spat with um, a guy who was kind of uh, showing all this information. Uh, the guy said that, you know, Duncan just showed up a few days ago, but Duncan said that, hey, like I've been sleeping in altitude 10 for seven weeks prior to this fight. And he's actually, he said that he's actually been in Mexico for over 15 days. So I'm going to trust him and say that he's going to be ready for this fight as far as cardio. Um, man, I, right now, this is going to be a tough one for me, but. 
I will lean towards Torres just being able to cash Duncan in round one with something clean just to end the fight because I have seen Duncan just be caught before. And I feel like if he's getting caught by this crazy guy, <laughs> um, it, it could be lights out. So right now, Torres via KO, but I'm staying away because if I, I think that Duncan is very live after round one, it could be a potential live bet opportunity because if he survives that brawl in round one, I think that he'll just be able to drown and implement his game plan uh, against uh, Torres because Torres is very unproven in the later rounds. We saw him gas out against Camacho, right? Like you mentioned. So I, I think that this could be a potential live bet play where Duncan, if he survives after round one, maybe a good kind of stab there uh, to kind of put it as a dog. Let's move on to the next fight on the main card here. Uh, we have a women's uh, MMA fight. We have Yasmin Haregi versus Sam Hughes. Yasmin is 10 and 1. She is 4 and 1 in the last five. She's actually coming off a KO loss to Denise Gomes in that first round. Sam Hughes, 8 and 5, 3 and 2 in her last five. She is coming off of a decision victory over Jacqueline Amorim. Let's look at the odds for this fight right now. Yasmin is actually a minus 525 favorite, opened up at a minus 300. Um, just for, for a point of reference for our viewers, Yasmin was a minus 350 against Denise Gomes and she got knocked out in 20 seconds. So I just want to put that in everybody's mind. Um, Alex, what are your thoughts about Yasmin versus Sam Hughes here? Yeah, so I think, I think Yasmin's a rightful favorite. I think this is like another giga lock, uh, in my opinion. I just don't think Sam Hughes will be able to punish Uregi the way Denise Gomes did. In terms of you know that suspect um, striking defense, um, you know to me this honestly seems like a scheduled win for Uregi, fighting on the main <laughs> fighting on the main card uh, in UFC Mexico. Uh, Uregi has more volume, hits harder, and the cardio also checks out. So I feel like this should be an easy Uregi win here. So I'd be very surprised if she loses this. Are you gonna suffer in parlays? I kind of suck at predicting <laughs> a lie, but <laughs> this should be a win. I don't know yet. You'll see. Yeah. Going up purepicks.gg. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yasmin. No, I think she's a very intriguing prospect for the, the UFC. I mean, um, you know, last fight, Hey, she got knocked out, but prior to that, she's shown some really slick and quick striking, some decent grappling as well. I think that her hand speed is actually what makes it flow well. I mean, she has some really fast hands and that can work in with the ca combos pretty quickly. Throws high volume as well. So she's kind of punches and bunches. She does have some brawler tendencies, though. And um, that brawler tendency is kind of what got her in trouble with uh, Denise Gomes, right? Opponents who have power and can counter well just to stop her in her tracks. So hopefully she's learned from that. Uh, she does have good grappling. I think that, uh, you know, she has 100% takedown defense, limited data, you know, but however, from her previous non-UFC bouts, I mean, she seems to be pretty sturdy in that sense. She can get opponents against the cage or perform open mat body takedowns. So she does have that in her arsenal. Yaregi has been training in Mexico City for the last six weeks. I think her, I mean, she seems to have great cardio. I think Brandon Moreno uh, rated her cardio like over 10 or something like that. So he's, he said he's really confident in this girl. Uh, Hughes striking, you know, and, and grappling. I think that she's just that classic kind of UFC vet that is kind of solid everywhere. Uh, she does have a negative striking differential. So, you know, maybe not the best striker, but she does have a decent volume when she throws. Um, durable vet. I mean, just the, see her last win, right? She was a pretty decent sized underdog in that, in that fight was losing and then came back and won that decision. So. I think that she does have that mentality in her. She's able to maintain the cardio and pace for all three rounds. I mean, Hughes does have some takedowns in her back pocket if needed, but she does struggle off her back. I think Hughes has been over in Mexico City for over two weeks, so she should be okay in the cardio sense. I do believe Yasmin will outpoint uh, Sam to a decision to win. You know, I, I just don't think that Sam imposes that same danger that uh, Denise Gomes did, so... I think the UFC did a smart thing and just put someone who's not as dangerous as a Gomes in this spot. So pick here is Yasmin by decision. 
but man, the, the odds are, um, I don't, I don't know if I want to stick that in the parlay. I mean, maybe it's free money, right? Because I mean, they're putting her in a main card spot. Like this should be just an easy win for her, but man, she got knocked down like 20 seconds in the last fight. So that's just not a, yeah, I don't know. I uh, will have to come back on that for later. I will say that it's interesting that the line movement is for the over two and a half opened up at minus 325 and now it's a minus 200. So people have been taking uh, the under two and a half on that spot right there. Interesting kind of movement. Let's move on to Raul Rosas Jr. and Ricky Turcios here. Uh, Raul Rosas Jr., 8-1, and 4-1 and one his last five. He's coming off that KO win over Terrence Mitchell, who obviously got cut after that, so kind of served the purpose there. Uh, Ricky Turcios, 12-3, and 3-2 three, three and two in his last five. He is coming off a split decision over uh, Kevin Navidad uh, decision split. So let's go for the odds for this fight. Raul Rosas Jr. is a minus 220. Open up at a minus 300. Um, yeah. Alex, I'm actually uh, kind of intrigued to hear what you get, think of this fight. What do you think about Rosas Jr. and Ricky here? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm going with Raul Rosas to get the the, the victory here over Ricky Tur- 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 Turkios. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Even even though Rosas hadn't, you know, really fought anyone noteworthy aside from Sirov, um, who Rosas lost to, uh, I really don't, I guess I, I really don't like how easy it was um, that Ricky was getting, uh, you know, taken down in his last fight against uh, Navidad. Um, he was taken down seven times in that matchup. And, you know, I just think that Rosas is way more relentless and sticky once he's able to get into that top position. Um, both guys seem to gas, you know, pretty badly down the stretch. So I think that kind of just cancels out. Um, but yeah, give me uh, Rosas in this matchup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I personally have a, uh, you know, not a love-hate relationship with Rosas Jr. I mean, it started off so well and, you know, kind of came all crashing down that sea rot fight. I remember just watching that live in the, in the theaters. <laughs> it just wasn't a good, good fight to watch. Um, Rosas Jr., I mean, he likes to start fast with his grappling, just apply the pressure and pace nonstop, likes to come out aggressively, shoot for takedowns, high takedown volume. Really is a good chain wrestler, uh, if you look at it. I mean, he attacks the subs as well, transitions pretty quick. The striking is actually okay. I think he needs some improvement there, which he has. I mean, he's coming off a KO victory, so that's good. His wrestling does open up his striking, so he's kind of well-versed in mixing it up. Now, Rosas Jr. has been training Mexico at altitude levels that are applicable, so he should be okay with whatever cardio he had. Now, the cardio that he had that he has might not be great, <laughs> but he should be okay in terms of the altitude. Uh, Ricky's a decent all-around fighter. I mean, he's not dangerous. He lacks the power that is needed in the UFC level. He does throw with high volume. However, this guy looks just not that great on the feet to me. I mean, to look at his, just, I watched this fight live. I remember, look at his fight against uh, Ayman Zahabi. That was just an embarrassing performance that Ricky put out there. He was just like doing some screams and grunts. And uh, yeah, I'm surprised that Zahabi just didn't knock this guy out during that fight. Uh, Ricky, you know, to his credit, I actually think that he's a good grappler. You know, he does scramble well and use sweeps to get back up. But like you mentioned, he did get taken down uh, pretty easily by uh, Navidad. So that's something that um, kind of is not a good uh, foreshadow for this fight in particular. Um, he does get stuck on his back, but he does stay active. I mean, good cardio in the past. Uh, he's been training Mexico City for a few weeks. Overall, I mean, I think this is going to be a stay away fight for me. You know, after going with C-Rod, I mean, after going with Rosas Jr. for C-Rod, I'm just... I am just scared of Rosas Jr. fighting someone who has cardio and someone who can grapple decently. So uh, I will lean towards Rosas Jr. finding a sub sometime in in the fight, but I'm staying away, man. This guy is still like this guy's like 19 years old, you know. Like <laughs> that's just the lesson I learned that this guy's just still a kid and he needs a little bit more experience, especially at the UFC level, before we can kind of trust him again after that C Rod debacle. Um, let's move on to the next fight that we have on the main card. We have Daniel Zellhuber versus Francisco Prado. Daniel Zellhuber, 14-1, 4-1 in his last five. He's coming off of a 
Anaconda choke submission victory over Christos Gallegos. Francisco Prado, 12 and 1. He is 4 and 1 his last five. Coming off that KO victory over Otman Azaitar. Odds for this fight right now Daniel Zuhilber is minus 260, opened up at a minus 450. Uh, so interesting odds and line movement there. Alex, what do you think about Zell Huber versus Prado here? Yep. So for this fight, I don't know if I want to take any action uh, just yet. There's a big reach advantage for Zell Huber, um, but I really didn't like how Zell Huber was getting uh, touched up in his last fight against uh, Christos Giagos. Now, Francisco Prado, he's way more tough. Um, at only 21 years old, I, I know for a fact this dude has a pretty solid, uh, rock solid chin. Um, so for Prado to win, you know, he'll need to slide into the pocket and capitalize on those, you know, opportunities. Uh, otherwise, I think Zell Huber likely just dances on him and pokes him down across three rounds. I think the volume edge definitely goes to Zell Huber, but Prado, I think, throws much harder. From the tape I've watched, um, Prado doesn't seem to have, you know, very slick methods of sliding into range. I think he was definitely, you know, having a tough time against Jamie Malarkey in his UFC debut. I think Prado just did very well against uh, a similar, like, short, stocky fighter like uh, Admin Azaitar. And so I just don't know how he's going to do against this tall, lanky guy. Um, so I think that's, you know, a very important uh, piece to consider. So I'm leaning uh, Zell Huber. Uh, but, you know, we'll see as the, as the week goes on if I take any action on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually leaning uh, Zell Huber, too. I'm, I think that he's actually a good all-around prospect, good rangy striking, nice stiff jab able to work in smooth combos with that jab and especially that head kick does that combo pretty well. Uh, his grappling is just a really nice takedown defense. He has like a 94% takedown defense and he's actually coming off a sub win. So he's showing signs of improvement in the grappling department from what I've seen. The last few weeks, he's been training Mexico City, so he should be good in terms of the cardio. Uh, Prado, good power in his shots. We saw that knockout finish. I mean, this guy has some good power, nice head kick as well. He does keep his chin a little unprotected and his just his his head movement isn't there for me. He kind of stays at a center line a little too much. I think that he is good in the clinch and can hold people there. Um, his grappling, I mean, he's an okay grappler, but I think his cardio fades faster as he grapples. We can kind of just check out that. Although it's on short notice, we can check out the Jamie Larkey fight. He was taken out three out of four times in his UFC, UFC debut. And was controlled for about four minutes. So that that fight really kind of showed him that he needs to, I think, level up his grappling game. Now Prado has been training Mexico and has been training at proper altitude levels, so he should be okay there. I, I do see this as a close fight. I think that Daniel, you know, um, he does have one stinker in his record. He he was pressured and backed up by Trey Ogden, of all people. And um, you know, Prado could implement a similar game plan. But I will lean towards Daniel winning via either submission or decision. Uh, but I'm staying away from this. I think that um, I just don't trust Zell Huber that much to actually kind of lay any kind of juice on him at this point. Um, moving on to the co-main event of the evening. This is going to be a banger for as long as it lasts. So we have Yair Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega. This is going to be a rematch after that kind of shoulder uh, dislocation injury that Ortega had. Uh, Yair, he is 18-4, 3-2 in his last five. He's coming off of a knockout loss to Alexander the Great Volkanovsky in that title fight about seven months ago. Brian Ortega, T-City, 14-3, 2-3 in his last five. And he's obviously coming off that shoulder injury about a year and a half ago. I mean, so, you know, he's uh, hopefully he's healed up by now. Odds for this fight right now, Yair is a minus 148, opened up at a, a plus 130. So he's actually an underdog, um, and he op now he's a slight favorite. The odds for the first fight, just to let you guys know, he was actually a plus 170 underdog to Brian Ortega in the first fight. So uh, Ortega 
I mean, whatever the case is, now he's the the favorite here. Um, Alex, what do you think about this co-main event between Yair and Brian Ortega here? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, I went back and watched the first fight between these two. I think before Ortega's shoulder injury, Ortega was definitely starting to realize some success pushing Yair against the cage and taking him down. As we saw in the bulk fight, you know, there's a real hole in Yair's game, uh, and that's his takedown defense. On the other hand, though, you know, Ortega hasn't fought since that fight, so it's been over a year and a half. And I saw a tweet saying that this dude is still in L.A. So... <laughs> With that, I'm picking Ayer because, you know, he's been the he's been the more active fighter and you know I'm certain that he's much better on the feet. So yeah, I got Yair here. Yeah, that that was a big red flag for me, man. Um this guy's been in LA training at you know sea level and uh I, I don't know if he's taking it as, as seriously as he should as far as this uh this fight here. I mean Yair is a truly a menace on the feet, slick kickboxer, good footwork. I think he has the best kicks at 145. You know, he can damage the head, body, and legs with his quick kicks. Uses elbows and knees pretty well too. Just do everybody do yourselves a favor. Look at that Korean zombie finish. That's the, probably the the greatest finish that I've seen ever. Just landed that kind of elbow on the last second to win. Uh, he does have a 51 percent striking defense, so he leaves himself open a little bit. Now the grappling, yes, that's where his hole is. I mean, he has a fifty-nine percent takedown defense. This has been his kryptonite in fights thus far. He can be controlled on the ground, and you know, Yair has shown to actually you know stay on his back at times instead of getting back up because he is kind of comfortable staying active on his back. You saw that in his fight against Josh Emmett, right? He caught Josh Emmett in a, a submission. Um, Yair obviously has been training Mexico City, so he's definitely well prepared for this as far as cardio. Ortega, slick grappler, can end the fight in many different ways on the ground and in grappling situations. You know, his takedown accuracy is not great, 23%. It's like bordering lawn, you know, Mackenzie Dern level. But he does land almost a takedown a fight. This guy does just need to land one uh, takedown to change the fight, though. He has great jiu-jitsu skills. His transitions are quick, and he's able to control opponents on the ground if needed. His striking has improved, uh, but he does seem a little bit slow and robotic to me in the striking. Very basic boxing combined with a few kicks. He does have like a front kick that he uses. Like you mentioned, I mean, this guy has been training in California. It is unknown um, how long he will be in Mexico City at this point. So that was just a major red flag to me. Give me Yair via KO decision. Uh, parlay piece. I'm sticking him in. I, I think that Ortega is... Uh, I think he's on his way out because after that shoulder injury, not fighting for a year and a half, this guy's still in LA. Like, I don't know. That's all just bad signs to me. So yeah, I'm, I'm full blown. Yeah. here this week. Let's move on to the main event of the evening. We have a rematch again. We have Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. Brandon Moreno, 21, seven and two, three and two in his last five. He's actually coming off that split decision loss in that championship fight against Alexandre Pantoja. Brandon Royval, four, 15 and seven. He is three and two in his last five. He's also coming off of a decision loss to Pantoja uh, for the championship about two months ago. So kind of a quick turnaround for him there. Odds for this fight right now, Moreno's a minus 290. Uh, open up at a minus 250. Odds for the first fight, just to let you guys know as well, he was a minus 155 favorite over Royval in their first fight about uh, three years ago. Alex, I'll let you kick off the main event breakdown. What do you think about Roy Val versus Moreno here? So I'm going to be taking Moreno here. Uh, I think Brandon Moreno is probably better everywhere. I like him if this fight stays standing. Uh, I also like him if, it gets, if he gets it to the ground as well. Uh, obviously, I went back and watched the first fight. I think Roy Val had a lot of success with uh, leg kicks. So, you know, if I'm him this fight, I'm looking to maintain distance and kind of just spam uh, leg kicks because he has amazing cardio. I think the best cardio in the flyweight decision, uh, flyweight division, hands down. Um, however, Roy Val never fights that way. Um, if you watch any of his fights, he's always the one putting on that pace and pressure. 
and I said this in the last fight against Pantoja, that forward pressure from Roy Bell is what always ends up getting him taken down. Um, so, I mean, I just can't trust Roy Bell to f fight a smart uh, fight with a good game plan. I think, you know, he's going to fight how he always fights, and I just think that's going to lead him to, you know, getting taken down and getting pieced up uh, in the pocket. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think that, um, especially this being a five round fight, right? This is going to play into uh, Moreno's wheelhouse a little bit more than Roy Val, that's for sure. I, I think that Moreno is a solid all round fighter. I do, I do think that he's like a solid B plus or A minus across the board. This guy's pretty good everywhere. Quick hands, fast hands, combos, counters well. I mean, he's able to work the body. Just look at how he finished Kai Kara France, like the liver shot to the body, right, with a kick. Uh, extremely durable as well. Moreno has some good grappling. I think that he's has good control, able to sit in chokes. He takes the back pretty quickly, and obviously Moreno uh, trains in Mexico, so he's going to be well prepared for this cardio. Uh, Val likes to brawl with high volume. He's able to use punches, kicks, knees, elbows. You know, he either chins people or he gets chinned himself. You know, he's a very finish or be finished kind of fighter. His, his grappling is actually kind of improving. I think that he can attack subs pretty quickly and chokes especially. However, he does favor the subs over the position. 40% takedown defense, not great. I mean, we saw that over and over again against Pantoja. Royval does train at Elevation Colorado, so I think he should be okay for the, the cardio portion. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't see this uh, rematch going any different. I think Moreno will be victorious. Uh, I will give Roy Val the benefit of the doubt and say he'll survive a decision and it will go to decision. Uh, but yeah, I think Moreno will be a solid parlay piece, even at these prices. I mean, minus 290, that that's that seems good to me. Um, I, think, I think Roy Val is the perfect type of guy to fade in this five-round fight. Well, that about does it for the breakdown. I think we made fantastic time given our uh, technical difficulty issues. You know, we broke down this card in about 57 minutes. So uh, I'm very proud of our efforts here. Alex, man, do you have anything at all uh, before we wrap up? Anything that you want to tell the peer pickers? Uh, no, other than, you know, we've been on a heater. Uh, you saw our bet MMA tips up 13 and a half units. Uh, we're really looking to carry that momentum forward. And I think this card especially has some some good spots we can attack. And so, you know, we're trying to trying to get that giga green again. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, definitely, man. Let's let's get that giga green to perma green. All we want is green candles this week and going forward. So yeah, really excited to lock in the plays on Friday. Please check out purepicks.gg to get all those picks guys i think that these are going to be some really good plays really good value especially for what you guys are going to sign up for so until next time we are out best of luck to everybody that's playing this week and we'll be back soon shit <laughs>